Nothing the screen has ever shown before can surpass the thrills of the Underwater Kaiju from Outer Space Podcast. Created from an atomic fireball hurled from outer space. The Underwater Kaiju from Outer Space Podcast. Threatens man's very existence on Earth. The Underwater Kaiju from Outer Space Podcast. Battles Godzilla, Mothra, and Rodan for mastery of the world. Men quake before the terror of their unleashed fury. All new, all never to be forgotten. A new high in... Visions from Monsterland. Hello everyone, welcome to Underwater Kaiju from Outer Space. My name is Jerry and helping me bring the visions from Monsterland, we have, of course, Mr. Venom. Greetings and salutations, sludge muckers. Hoo hoo hoo, getting saucy already. We also have the one and only Don. Screeonk <laughs> and save the earth, everyone. And, of course, bringing up the rear, we've got 10 out of 10 Derek. Speaking of rare, there's this one scene in a later episode of Ultraman where there's a giant hemorrhoid, and you know there's sludging gas in this episode tonight, guys. <laughs> no hemorrhoids though. Well, why am I even here? I brought the hemorrhoids. <laughs> nice. All right. <laughs> so uh, tonight, if you people have not noticed from the title, we are doing Godzilla versus Hadora. Um, which is a mainstay of a lot of us kids who grew up on the Sci-Fi Channel, uh, because that is where this movie really, really took up. Even though it, when it it did get a theatrical release here in the U.S., it was actually double billed with Frogs, which is dope. Because Venom will know that I got the tagline correct for Frogs <laughs> in uh, the uh, wonderful, wonderful. Uh, Tr- horror trivia contest that JP uh, from 22 Shots and Brandon from Exploding Heads are doing. So, always good. That's, That's awesome. right. One of the only ones you got, right? Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> I didn't do that bad, okay? I only had four points less than you, and five. I, I had five points. You had four points. No, five, because I got that irreversible question right mistakenly i thought that gave you four for some reason hmm. yeah, either way fuck i'll re-listen to it and <coughs> come back to nah, it. no um, need to do that <laughs> so yes we are doing godzilla versus hador from 1971 uh pg rated even though at one point it did get a g rating it is officially pg uh it is an hour and 25 minutes and it is the directorial debut of Yashimitsu Bono. I just call him Bono because I don't like his uh, first name. Yeah, go ahead. I think everybody will be fine with that. So it will be Bono because I say so. Now, there is something really cool that I want to uh, bring up. I brought this up before, mm-hmm. but I just thought this was really, really funny for this one. If I can get this to load. And go up to where I need it to fucking go. Come on, go get there, get there. Yeah, yeah. No, those are all the trailers. I don't need that. I don't. I don't need video releases either. Come on, You're killing me. <laughs> Damn it. Oh, here we go. Okay, the alternative titles for this movie are great. So I'm gonna name some alternative titles in the English translation of it, and we're gonna see who can guess what country. Obviously, right. in America, it's Godzilla versus Smog Monster. Yes, what is. country called it Hedora the Toxic Bubble? Bubble. Hedora mm, the Toxic like, Bubble. That sounds like Italy. You're very uh, close. I'm going to say Spain. Ding, ding, ding. Spain. Um, <laughs> next, we go to Godzilla against Monsters of Smog. 
<laughs> that could be any fucking country. Uh, um, go ahead, John. Uh, France. Wrong. Germany. Nope. Yeah. Derek. Uh, Italy. Nope. Mexico. Oh. Uh. <laughs> And, fun fact, it also got released as the Monsters of Smog in Mexico without the uh, Godzilla part. All right, this one should be an easy one. Frankenstein's Battle Against Germany. the Devil Monster. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't have to finish that if you people don't know. Germany loves to just call things in Godzilla movies Frankenstein. Um, yeah, they do. All right, here we go. Godzilla, Fury of the Monster. Godzilla, Fury mm. of the Monster. Italy? Yes. Damn. <laughs> Derek, you missed your point. Stealing, stealing your thunder, Derek. <laughs> All right, close to the Mexican one, Godzilla against the Monster of Fog. It's combining the Mexican one in it. China. No, not China. Oh, yeah, uh, Poland? Brazil? Nope, not Poland or Brazil. It is Belgium. Belgium. Uh, mm. Here we go. Close to Belgium. Godzilla against Hedora. France. Nope. Austria? Nope. Hmm. Sweden? Nope. Poland. Damn it. Uh, also oh. close uh, to these Belgium and Poland countries, we have Satan's Creature. That's not even close, is it? <laughs> uh, I'm going to try Sweden once again. Nope, Norway. not Sweden. Nope, not Norway. Close. You're getting real close. France. What? France? Nope. The Netherlands? N- Netherlands. It oh, is Netherlands. Netherlands. We have our, our last one, and I don't think anyone will get this even when guessing, but just simply titled Monster Hedora. Turkey. Holy shit, yes. Ha! <laughs> How the fuck did you get that? Do you have this pulled up? No, no. I just really feel like Turkey for some reason. <laughs> okay. Wow. Hmm. It's interesting. Hmm. Very interesting that you would get that. Actually, it stems from last night's conversation about Turkish Jaws. <laughs> oh, I didn't know there was a conversation about Turkish Jaws. Yeah, yep, it was just was. fresh in my mind. No, there was. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, me and Venom were on the uh, first half of the Bay and Blood uh, Jaws ripoff spectacular. So we recorded that last night, and Turkish Jaws got brought up. I don't know if I've ever seen a Turkish Jaws. I've seen Turkish I Star Wars. Neither. I haven't neither. So. Well, that's I don't feel bad if you haven't seen it. Seen. <laughs> yeah, that's one of the few I haven't seen. I've seen anything like Turkish Star Wars, and it's a fucking masterpiece. Nah, I've seen that. I've seen the Turkish Rambo, too. <laughs> uh, all right, well, enough of the turkey. We uh, We need to get into the cold cuts of this Godzilla movie, which is... One of the most unique Godzilla films ever, and it also kind of goes back to Godzilla's origin with having a message, but its message isn't about nuclear waste, it's about human waste, and how we are destroying the world with our pollution, and for some reason, an asteroid apparently hit the Earth that had some kind of thing on it that then fed on our pollution and turned into a monster named Hedorah. So, with that being said, we're going to start this off with what did you... L- Wait, I'm pretty sure I know this. This is no one's first time watch, right? Yeah. Okay, everyone's seen this movie before. Cool. Mm-hmm. All right, uh, we're going to start off with Don. What is your favorite thing about this movie? I love the fact that this is one of the first... This is the first time where Godzilla fight faces an evolving opponent. Hidora goes through multiple different stages and we get, you know, he actually has either an encounter or we get to see it, you know, all of these various stages in action at least once. So I think it just adds like a unique flair to it for, you know, like suspense, like which one is, you know, how is he going to take the creature out? Which one is he finally going to be able to bring down and defeat? That That's a very, very good point. Um, All right. Venom, what is your favorite thing about this movie? 
believe it or not, I'm going to go with something aesthetic about the movie, and that is Hedorah's eyes. I fucking love Hedorah's eyes. And I'm not just talking about the red uh, sclera part, which would normally... <laughs> On, in a human eyeball, that would be the whites of our eyes. But it, but the iris, too, of Hedorah's eyes. I don't know if you guys got a chance to pause it on any of his close-ups, but he's got this cool kind of gold sunburst effect going in his iris. So, you know, that iris of black and gold on, on the Sclara base of blood red, I just think looks fucking amazing. It's probably some of my favorite kaiju eyes I've ever seen. Yeah, I have to agree. I also like how he glitters. Yes. Uh, I always thought that was really, really cool. Um, Derek, what is your favorite thing about this movie? I just love how fucking batshit it is. <laughs> it just gets <laughs> off the rails. Like, you know, you get, like, you know, the slow setup, and then, you know, once Hedorah comes to the picture, then, you know, you get introduced to some, like, fucking hippies, and you get some fucking people getting killed on the streets, then you fucking get a giant hippie rally going and there's the final showdown with Godzilla. Then I'm going to not say it. I'm going to leave it for like later on in the discussion, the most, what the fuck moment ever in Godzilla <laughs> history yeah. happens. We will get and, to that. Yeah. So, and then, <laughs> you know, you just did for the ride. It's like a roller coaster of a movie. And you know, the, uh, it's just weird. Cause then there's some fucking weird, like this would be a perfect Godzilla movie to, smoke a giant bong to and just watch it because of the animation and weird trippiness of some of the dance scenes in it and you know it even starts out like a james bond movie <laughs> it's fucking yeah. weird it's fucking um, a weird one it's very weird uh and i was going to use that as mine that uh you know what say what you want about the movie but it is one of the most unique movies of the series. It, it is not anywhere near that. But I want to talk... Like, my favorite thing are certain s scenes. Um, my favorite scene in this movie is actually a really low-key one. Um, it's in the main Godzilla vs. Ghidorah fight. And it's after uh, Ghidorah starts hitting the people with sludge who were throwing torches at him. And then right mm. after that, he walks towards the others... Um, and there's this great shot of him walking towards him with all the people just standing there, not knowing what to do. You know, some of our main characters are there and I just love this shot. Um, and then, you know, Godzilla blast him, which is pretty dope, but I love that shot. I love the, the, sh the cinematography in this movie. It is done so well. It is just someone knew what they were doing behind the camera to give us really, really unique shots. Like there's even weird shots of like. This fish lens that's Godzilla's like punching towards us. Like the film is so weird that I love it. And also it meets my criteria for when a Godzilla is a horror movie showing us actual human death, um, yeah. which is a very a big it. thing for me. Not just um, a building getting crushed, but people actually die. Sometimes I go with the main character of this movie kind of being a little kid this and obviously explaining like pollution in very elementary ways and having these weird science lessons it's so dark and and brooding and just deadly and it just kind of makes you go who were they aiming for with this audience because it's all over the fucking place yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, it real. is it is crazy. Okay, we are going to uh, move into what we did not like about this movie. We're going to start with Venom. What did you not like? Honestly, I, I could live without the whole public service announcement aspect of this movie. Now, I understand in 1971, this might have been a, a fresh concept, you know, ha having this movie talk about environmental protection and things like that. But ultimately, I've said it before on the show, I'm sure it'll come up again later on, but every, it, for those that are paying attention, every single episode, every single film in the Godzilla franchise is talk, is a PSA. Now, uh, as Jerry mentioned earlier, we're usually talking about nuclear fallout and the effects of you know nuclear weapons, things like that. This one is more about humans' pollution of the environment. But it just, in this day and age, I just kind of, as soon as I realized what they were going for on this latest watch, it just reminded me of one of the weakest parts of this movie. I understand some people are going to like it, you know, the, the earthy crunchy types, and that's fine. Nothing wrong with that. 
just for me, I'm just so done with films, you know, especially fun films like a Godzilla film, having to have a message to try to make me feel bad about being a human being. It kind of irks me. But, you know, like I said, in 71, it might have been a little bit more acceptable. But in 2020, I'm just kind of done with it. Uh, yeah. And some of the the PSAs just that they shove in there are really dumb. Like, why do I need to know about, like, a star exploding and shit like that? Like, why are you telling me about the, the universe? Like, mm-hmm. we're focusing on the Earth here. I don't know. That's weird. Um, Derek, what did you not like about this movie? Okay. You know the main hippie dude in this movie? Like, yeah. he's hanging with, like, the little... Like, they're building him up to be, like, some kind of, like, character. And then when he fucking dies, it's like, no one even mentions, like, or, like acknowledges his death because you know he was like hanging with like the professor and shit in the house and fucking I think that's shit. the older son. That's the yeah. uh, that's the older brother. Yeah, they still didn't acknowledge him, you know what I mean, for the rest of the movie after he died. It was weird and jarring in that sense too. Like like oh you know, it's okay. You know, it's like a, eh. you you're was right. our favorite there's there's yeah. no central uh main character for us to latch on to. Uh, I mean, I guess the kids would latch on to the kid, and I think he's kind of the primary focus. But, like, for the adults, there's really no one for us to, to lie on to. The hippie guy just kind of does nothing. His girlfriend does nothing. The father just kind of is in a bed for 90% of the movie. It's just really dumb. I don't know. It's, yeah, not having a, a ideal lead character really does hurt. Um, yeah. Don, what did you hate about this movie? Well, uh, you took mine with the uh, jarring tone, but um, I'm going to bring up the inconsistency with Eudora. They they mentioned that the creature spews a sulfuric acid mist, which you, you, we see on several several occasions where it flies over the city and it strips people to their bones. But yet when it's convenient for the plot to do so, it just has them choking people out or they just collapse to the floor unscathed. And yet, you know, two seconds later, it, they'll do another attack where it flies over another city and it reduces them to skeletons. So it's like, it doesn't change much, but it just leaves like an inconsistent attack pattern to where it depends on what they wanted to do for the sto- for the sake of the sequence. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so you, you took Derek, uh, Derek took yours, then you took mine. I, I want to jump on that because like, Hedora is so inconsistent in this movie when it comes to his power. Like, how come the dad gets like half his face burned off underwater, but the kid shoves a knife and is literally inches away from Hedora and only gets a, a little bit on his hand and then that kind of disappears later on in the movie, but the dad's face is still looking like the fucking green Gorilla. monkeys from, from Mecha God, Godzilla. Mecha God. Yeah, that's yeah. What I thought like too, what the fuck? And, and and just throughout like uh, all of a sudden, he throws uh, sludge, and it hurt. It destroys people and hurts Godzilla. But then other times, Godzilla can punch right into him and throw out sludge, and it doesn't hurt Godzilla at all. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, it's so inconsistent. Uh, you you took mine. So uh, I really didn't like that there was no use of PPE. That is uh, protective equipment. Uh, they are picking up stuff that they say is toxic with their bare hands. There's no safety goggles. Uh, these are bad scientists. Um, I, I, I also don't like the kid's choice of wardrobe. Who the fuck wears a turtleneck with short shorts? <laughs> What's going on here? Who made these choices? Why does every little boy in Japan wear short shorts? Is that what those were? I thought they were assless chefs. I don't know, man. It bothers me. I don't, uh, but that, man, we kind of hit that, on everything. Uh, Go ahead. I was going to say, did you notice that Godzilla was actually a thing in this movie? Like in Godzilla's Revenge, where they had action figures of Godzilla, the, the kid yeah. was playing with? Yeah, he had Godzilla, Ghidorah, there was an Ultraman. <clears throat> it was pretty I was dope. wondering, in the English dub, the kid mentions that he has Superman toys, too. Mm-hmm. Um, I was wondering, was that added to the American dub, or is Superman actually popular in 1971 Japan? Uh, I'd have to watch the Japanese version. Toys. He uh, said he did, but, uh, but I looked I, I, carefully. I 
I thought he said he was a fan, not he, that he had any toys. Well, no, yeah, he, he said, he was like, Godzilla's my, I, the guy was like, oh, you've got some Godzilla toys, and he's like, Godzilla's my favorite, also Superman, so it can be taken both ways. Okay, but, yeah, that, I, I, see, yeah. uh, I mean, I'm sure Superman was popular over there. I don't know. I'd have to watch the Japanese version to see. Um, but I know the mm-hmm. dub that we watched is the international dub, which was made in Hong Kong by Toho. Right. Or Toho paid for that one to get made. So it, it's whatever's in that one is approved by Toho. Right, right. Uh, I was just figuring that with all the popular characters in Japan in this time, uh, Superman wouldn't necessarily be one that he would jump on, but you know he could ultimately. Eh. It's it's a reach. <laughs> it's a reach for Maybe. me. I mean, um, so yeah, we did kind of hit on a bunch of uh, of the negativity, and we kind of hit it. the 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 movie is jarring all over the place. Uh, the PSAs are are pretty terrible. Hedora has really bad inconsistencies. Uh, a scientist not using any PPE and a uh, once again a child in short shorts, constantly. Um, Just despite his fashion choices, I do want to say that the kid did not annoy me to death. No, like, he as soon ma- as he, he showed up on screen, I, I always have that initial kind of you know oh. guttural reaction. It's like, oh great, here comes the kid. But at no point did he rub me the wrong way. A fashion statement aside. In fact, he actually helped the plot. He helped people mm-hmm. when it came to, like, Hedora. He had this weird psychic thing where he kept predicting Godzilla, which was weird. Yeah. Um. So. Yeah, he was dreaming about him and shit. <laughs> yeah. I do want to bring out something that kind of... I, I want to see what y'all's opinion is. Um. In the final battle, when they're trying to get the panels uh, fully charged to electrocute Hedora, Godzilla shoots the panel. Now, did he miss Hedora and accidentally shoot the panel and then realized, oh shit, this is doing some damage, let me shoot it again? Or did he know that it would do that and shot the panel on purpose? What do y'all think? Who's got an opinion? Your guess is probably going to be as good as mine on that one. I, I saw that too. I was Because it seemed... It, it didn't seem to me by watching it that he was aiming for Hedora. It seemed like he was solidly going for the plates every time, especially yeah. once he figured out that they did something. But uh, even on that first time, it seemed like he looked right at the plates and then shot his atomic breath at it. So, yeah. How smart yeah. is Godzilla? You know? It's pretty smart because he does like it near the end of the episode, like fucking, you know, like he turns around to like, don't fucking pollute motherfuckers or I'm going to fucking come for you. <laughs> yeah. Um. And I do have a couple of things I want to bring up that are kind of cool for this movie. Uh, one, as we all know, uh, uh, Tomiyuki Tanaka, who was the producer for the Godzilla series, was hospitalized during the making of this movie. So he didn't have much involved with it. And when he came out and saw the movie, he was not happy. Now, according to Bono, Bono says that that's all exaggerated. But other people have said, no, he was very upset. And it's actually kind of funny because... Uh, Bono did not get to direct another movie for Toho. And keep in mind, Bono did, like, cut his teeth on very important things. Like, he uh, was an assistant director for um, Akira Kurosawa on movies <laughs> like uh, uh, Throne of Blood. And there was another one that he worked on for Kurosawa that was big besides Throne of Blood. What was it? Rashomon. Uh- no, Yojimbo? no, Yojimbo? no, not Yojimbo, not Rashomon. Um, oh, the Hidden Fortress, that one. Mm. Um, oh, that's weird. <clears throat> we were just talking about that like a week ago. Yeah, yeah, because I just, I had just, I've been, I watched um, Seven Samurai Yojimbo and Sanjora uh, this past week, and I, I need to move on and do uh, Hidden Fortress and Rashomon and maybe Throne of Blood. Um, so I, I I would say that Tanaka was pretty pissed because he got he didn't really get to direct again whatsoever for Toho, which is is pretty sad because obviously he knows what he's doing. He's just a little too eccentric. Uh, he even wrote a script for a Godzilla vs. Hedorah two that obviously never came to fruition. I don't even know if he wrote the, a full script, but he said he worked on it and even worked on it long after being told he would not make another Godzilla movie. Um, but he kept trying. He eventually tried to make a IMAX Godzilla 3D 
uh, to the Max film, which never worked, but uh, he is the one that went to Legendary, because um, after Tanaka died, he did have some power and get some rights, and he's the one that made the Legendary uh, Godzilla yeah, he's, films he's happen. producer, yeah. Yep. So we do got to give him props for that. Um, also, I'm sure Don probably already knows this, uh, but... Hedora is played by a future Godzilla suit actor. It is... Mm-hmm. Uh, how do you say this name, Don? Uh, just go with the easy... The nickname, Ken Satsuma. Yeah. Uh, Kenpachiro Satsuma, who plays Godzilla in the um, Heisei series. Uh, and also, he did play Gigan in uh, the next movie. Godzilla vs. Yeah, Gigan. And yeah, Paul Oh, sorry, too. Oh, yeah, I was looking up that today because I was like, did he get kidnapped also? Like mm-hmm. the like yeah. the director? Uh, but no, he didn't. But Toho did get tricked. Everyone, because a lot of people from Toho worked on this film, they all thought they were filming in China. But yeah. they don't consider it, they don't say they got kidnapped, they just say they got tricked. Yeah, so. um, according, to, according to Satsuma, he said that once they arrived, they were treated well, they were given liberties, and, you know, they, they weren't allowed to contact their families, but they were treated well. But, and then, you know, as soon as they were done, they were allowed to leave under the condition that they never speak about it. So, according to him, he said it wasn't a bad experience, just I think he has sour memories of how it came to be. Mm. If mm-hmm. I can find... Uh, if I can find a ripped version of Paul Gasari, uh, do y'all want to do that for the next episode? I want to try to find a... I'll look at the YouTube version, but I think that should be our next episode. That'd be fun. Oh, yeah. It, uh, Paul Gasari is awesome. It's it's really good. I love it. So, yeah. that might be the next episode, guys. Um, <laughs> okay. Uh, was there something else I wanted to bring up for this movie? I'm trying to remember. Does anyone else have something else they want to say about the movie? Um, Derek, do you want to mention the elephant in the room, or do you want me to do it? Oh, yeah. Derek, bring up your favorite scene. Uh, okay, so it's the, the famous Hedora's getting away scene. Hedora's in his flying mode. He's flying. God, everyone's like, how the fuck is Godzilla going to catch Hedora? And you're thinking that, too, at the same time. Because, you know, he's going fucking super fast. And then Godzilla goes into the fetus position and shoots his atomic breath and starts to fucking fly in the air. Mm. <laughs> and, so and keep in mind, this yeah. movie is Robert Ebert's favorite Godzilla movie of all time. Oh, well, that says a lot about Robert Ebert. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he must have um, dropped acid. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, there are a couple of things. I do want to talk about this also. Uh, there is a uh, a, uh, a misreported fact. Uh, kind of like that there's two endings to Godzilla vs. King Kong. Uh, there's another one around this one uh, that I found on IMDb and then I double-checked a few other places and it turned out to be correct. Um, a certain author was pushing this for a long time as real, but it is not. Um... One commonly misreported fact about the film stated that Hedorah's suit actor, uh, Satsuma, suffered from appendicitis during shooting and had to undergo surgery while still inside his monster costume. In reality, his symptoms only got bad after filming had already wrapped and he was doing an interview for a magazine while wearing the suit. He was taken to the hospital following the interview, but was not treated on set or in the costume. Mm-hmm. One part of the story that yeah. is true is that he found out his body is resistance against painkillers. Even after being sedated, Satsuma had felt the pain of the surgery. And I want to say, as someone who's had appendicitis and almost died from it, that shit hurts. Yeah, me too. That that, that hurts like a motherfucker. Real bad. Even even the drive to the hospital is just torturous. Bro, uh, story time. Um, (laughs) So, I I woke up that morning, and I was having pain, uh, you know, on the right side of front of my stomach and i told my mom i have stomach pain and i you know i have ibs so that that was common she was like oh you'll be fine you'll be fine sent me to school i was in iss in school suspension that day i will not tell you what for um let's just say it was very anti-christian of me so protests are not acceptable in schools 
Um, at least back in my day, they weren't. So I was sitting in school suspension and all day I am in pain. I am in pain. I am in pain. And the uh, ISS teacher uh, literally told me, uh, you're lying. You probably just have to take a crap. Go to the bathroom. Went to the bathroom. Did not have to take a crap. Still in tons of pain. Teacher would not let me go. I was in ISS all day. My buddy had to come and walk me to our bus. Uh, and then when we got off our bus in our apartments, he walked me up to the second floor to drop me off in my living room on my couch. And luckily my mom, who was working nights, that was just about the time she woke up for the day. So she came out, she's like, why are you crying? And I'm like, just tears. I am crying harder than I did when I saw the cat covered in sludge in Godzilla vs. Adora. Um... (laughs) And she takes me to the hospital and I get there and, you know, they do a test and everything. And they're like, we have to get him in surgery right now. We cannot delay. His appendix has ruptured and he is, he is, he's going to die. We, we have to get him in there. Uh, cause once it ruptures, you can die. You're fucked. Yeah. Um, so I went into surgery. It was all good. I got, I, I was good. I got staples put in my, uh, they didn't sell me up. I got staples. Which, fun story, one time a magnet caught on to it on the fridge. Um, <laughs> and I got that ISS teacher fired. So, nice. fuck yeah. Uh, so yeah, that was a story time with Jerry. Was yours as fun, <laughs> Venom? Uh, I was at a bowling alley. Um, literally, like, on the second to last frame of my game. And just you, did you nowhere. have a perfect game going? Oh, not remotely. No, I'm terrible. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, it was just something to do that afternoon. It wasn't even planned. We were just bored. But um, yeah, with like at the second to last frame of uh, the last game we were going to play, I just out of nowhere got this ridiculous sharp pain, keeled over and just was absolutely dying. Um, unfortunately, it was my buddy's mom who drove us to the bo- to the bowling alley. I was uh, basically when she came to pick us up, I was begging her to take me to the hospital. I'm like, please, please, this 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 can't be normal. This isn't a normal stomach ache. She kind of had the same thing that uh, that ISS teacher of yours kind of you know thought it was just a stomach ache or that I had to take a shit or whatever. But um, I'm begging her to take me to the hospital. She refuses to take me. She's like, I'm not gonna. You're not. You're not my son. I'm not gonna take you to the hospital. I'm gonna take you home which is the complete opposite direction of the hospital. So yeah, she takes me home. I walk into the kitchen of my house and I just fall over. Like I literally, it takes both my parents to pick me up and walk me back outside into their car. And my appendix burst on the way to the hospital, which was probably a good 40 to 45 minutes after I should have been taken to the hospital, or at least after I was begging to be taken to the hospital. And, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know how close to death I actually came, but I mean, they knew that it had ruptured, um, during the ride. Cause you know, I just, you know, Jerry, every time that we you hit a, like a speed bump or any kind of bump on the road, it if you feels like fucking someone's breathe, you. Yeah, it's yeah, like, exactly. you did, it's like getting stabbed and then they twist the knife before yeah, yeah. they yank and then it the out. Crying makes it worse. Cause then, you oh know, your God. diaphragm's going in and out and it's just causing even more pain, blah, blah, blah. Um, my surgery was uneventful, you know, they got it out. Um, like I said, I don't know how close to death I may have been. I don't think I really was. It was just excruciating and I would definitely not recommend it to anyone. Yeah. <laughs> and I had to go through that for, you know, fucking eight hours. Oof. Yeah. Jesus. Like it was eight or nine hours that I went through that. That's why I was, cause once it ruptures, it can start polluting your system. Yeah, toxic from, shock. Um, so that's why it was so bad for me. They were actually amazed that I I didn't have I didn't have anything else that I had to deal with. I was very very lucky because they were like he's about to die, and even if he doesn't die, he's going to have other issues. And luckily, I I didn't. I I really uh, lucked out. So that's story time with Jerry and Venom about appendicitis. <laughs> Uh, probably the second worst pain I've ever felt. Uh, kidney stones being the first. Uh, you know, lines. I've also had kidney stones, but I, I think the appendix was worse. At least I, I the memory of it was much worse. Like uh, I remember the kidney stones being awful, 
but I just don't remember like keeling over and not being able wow. to carry my own weight. Blah, I blah, do. Blah. My kidney stones are fucking rough. Um, <laughs> whew. So, so yeah. Godzilla versus the Spog Monster guys. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. We went into story time. Y'all can deal with it. Um, so yeah, Hidori is a great monster in this movie, even though despite inconsistencies. And the movie is actually a really good Godzilla movie. Um, and it's one that showed on the Sci-Fi Channel all the time growing up. I loved it. Um, but with that, I guess we can move on to the Ultraman report. Uh, and this time, it is this time Derek doing it. I get to sit back and fucking chill with Venom. Derek can, is doing the. The walkthrough and Don's doing the fight scene. I am balling. This is this is all in the making, guys. This is my apology for last episode. Oh yeah. So, okay. So last episode, we got confused as to who was doing what. I thought Derek was doing the walkthrough, so I didn't take like full notes. I like when it comes to the Ultraman walkthrough, I take full notes if I'm doing it. I I, I break down almost every scene, but if I'm not doing it. I take three or four notes. That's it. I just jot down a few things, if that. Because um, for these, for like the, the underwater kaiju, I don't have to take that many notes. I do my research. I do jot a few notes when watching the movie. And I'll put a little extra stuff in there when I read my books uh, on the movie. But I had to just wing it last episode. Because we are all dumb and didn't realize until the very last minute that we fucked up. So I, w- I had to wing it. Um, thankfully, it did go well. I don't even know if the people know that we, we fucked up. So that's good. So this time, Derek is making it up for me by giving me vacation. And he's taking over. So Derek, lead us into Ultraman Report. All right. Uh, episode 21, Break Through the Smoke, first aired on December 4th, 1966. Now, Woohoo! Birthday episode. Woohoo! Oh, is it your birthday, really, though? Yeah. December 4th. Uh, I'm 84, not 66, but birthday episode. Woohoo. Hell yeah. Yeah, I had one on my birthday too. I got to relook at what episode that was. Hell Me yeah, too. Dom. I think it came out, my, one of them came out on my birthday too. I can't remember. But uh, quick note for the audience uh, Jerry already knows this. I was drunk one night and lost my DVD set, so I did have to watch the Japanese version of this. So if I do ask you guys some, in, like, a uh, if there was any differences in language, that might come up. Okay. But, uh, I did I did the best with taking the notes on Pause the... real quick. Let's talk about this. Let's play a game. Where is Derek's Ultraman DVD set? I'm going to go with under his bed. I looked. Okay, not under his bed. Uh, anyone got a guess? Um, mm. underneath, underneath his passenger seat in his car. <laughs> It may be. It depends on uh, I'm going to say he's got it in... Not, no, not in. I think he's got it underneath one of his... Um, under, underneath the bookcase stand where he stores them. I think the disc fell through and it's underneath it. Maybe. Okay, okay. It's probably in his is freezer. It, is it just the disc honest. that you're missing or the entire package? The, the entire DVD package. Okay. Hmm. Uh, it happens. Like, this always happens to when I'm looking for something. If I'm not looking for it, then I find it automatically. <laughs> but, That's like pretty that funny. One time when I was looking for BioZombie. <laughs> but uh, anyways, uh, the episode, of course, opens with a young boy walking through the hills. And I'm like thinking... Oh no, is this the sound of music? <laughs> and then he just starts picking then he notices something on the ground and it's a dead pigeon. And the first reaction he has is to pick it up and start petting its head. Oh pretty bird. Pretty bird. Pretty bird. <laughs> Polly want a cracker. Then he notices a bunch of other dead birds on the ground and he's like, What is going on? Then he sees one fly in and then fall into the death and you know then he takes a bunch of them to i'm gonna guess it's his teacher and his uh yeah, yeah the one standing is his teacher i don't know who the the one sitting down is i, yeah. I would imagine maybe the principal or like another teacher yeah that's what i was thinking too yeah i i the one that's standing the entire time is the teacher though 
Yeah, and then of course, fucking uh, what ends up happening is you know they're like, uh, could be some gas, but it's like the volcano has been dead for like uh, so long, you know, and you know, and they're like they kind of brush it off. They're like, all right, go school back to school, kids, you know. Uh, then we cut to uh, four young Asian women walking through the same hills, and I was like, okay, movie, you got um, my attention now. This chick in white jeans and red shirt has that ass. Oh my god, chicken white jeans and red shirt. That ass, yeah, please. Yeah. Yes. That was the girl. That was that's the girl a, I was after. That was my actually, That was my I was note. actually digging on the chicken mom jeans. <laughs> I thought she looked great. Okay, we now know Venom's weird fetish. <laughs> hey, she's, she she was number two for me. She was Yeah, baby girl. Put on me. put on those the, mom jeans. The two that <laughs> The two that left to hike, the two that left to go exploring, were the ones that I would take. The two that stayed yes. behind, are the ones that I think, yeah, they should have been left. Well, <laughs> y'all can have them all because I'm gonna take Fuji. <laughs> yeah. Especially after like she gets knocked, happy. like especially after she gets knocked out in this episode. Spoiler alert. <laughs> well, let's get there before we start spoiling it then. Yeah, but you know these girls are exploring the volcano, the crater, and stuff, and they're like. Oh look, there's a there's some water down there, and they drop an apple in it, and then it starts bubbling like a fucking witch's cauldron. Then they sit down and have their picnic, and before they get into their foursome of lesbian actions, unfortunately, a lot of smog comes out of the volcano, and then we're introduced to our main monster of this piece, Camular. Is that how you pronounce it, Don? Yeah, Camular. So, yeah, Camular. Yeah, yep, yeah, it's kind of like Belmiar with a K. Makes sense. How original of a name change. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it cuts to them running away, which you should. Definitely when you see a giant fucking monster. Then we cut to the homies at the fucking side of the troll there. Got the information about the case and, you know, Harashi's bullshitting. Like, this is a woman and a child's job. Yeah, Hiroshi hey, okay. is a sexist dick in this scene. What? And how is this a woman's job? There's gas that are killing birds, and then people cited a monster. I mean, did, did were they not told about the monster? Did they only know about the dead birds? I, I, would, I would imagine that they're going out just for the fog. Because that, that would be the only thing that would really warrant them coming out. I mean, the birds, they never say much about, but... But the fact that the girl, the, the hikers encounter the gas, it makes it seem like maybe they, like they would be called out for that. Like these strange eruptions coming out of the grounds. But did the girls not it, report yeah. the monster it, that it they clearly saw? As, I don't know. We clearly see it. We don't get any indication that they did, though. Do we? I feel like we did. Because the the dub doesn't make it seem like the women encounter the creature because it's not until later on when, you know, when Fuji arrives that they actually spot it. Okay, maybe, when, maybe you're right. I, I, Wait, I don't know. Are you talking about the women at the picnic? Yes. Yeah. They did. did they, didn't they react violently right before the scene cut from them? Yeah, I they thought did. They, they did, did. but they did. maybe they're maybe Don's right and they're reacting to the to the gas. No, they yeah. didn't see the monster because I saw them. I actually yeah, wrote they that show Kimular's face, like part of his face in that scene. Well, yeah, yeah, but that's it, that could be the it showing yeah, the audience, yeah, and be, not them. Yeah, because it's it, it's the close up on his face, but then it cuts to the science patrol. See, so it's not it, right. it's not an indication that they're reacting to it. It's just it, an indication that that's they're causing it. Yeah. Oh, I think I think that was just an example of a reverse um, reaction shot. I, Rather than and, showing us the monster and then the reaction, they just show us the reaction first and then showing us what they're reacting to. That's yeah. how I took it. And I agree with you. But the problem is, is the reason why I like Dawn Siri is because it really fixes a problem I have of them saying, oh, yeah, this is a girl's job. But if a monster was reported, that's not a girl's job. That's the, the entire Science Patrol team's job. Yeah, that's their the entire mission is check out monsters and prevent it from destroying the city. Like, well, hell, hell, they checked out fucking fish dying in a lake in smaller senses. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, <laughs> so it makes it... most likely this is bad writing done so that f they can Fuji is the only one that goes out there. 
Uh, and spoiler, her brother's there also. Like, it, yeah. it's just bad writing. I think the women did see the monsters. I don't know if they reported or not, but this whole this thing right here is just bad writing. It's fucking terrible. Yeah. It's, it's did highly... we ever see any of those girls again? No. Could, no. Could, it, could it be that they were killed? Could it oh! be that Kimular killed them? You're right. They could have been dead because a lot of people die in this episode. Like, they show a lot of people dying in this episode. Yeah. It's Maybe. very Smog Monster-ish. It's a perfect episode to team up with Smog Monster, honestly. Yeah, yeah exactly. there's actually multiple reasons that this episode goes well with Smog Monster, and I'll get I'll get into it when we get to the fight later. Okay, yeah. so yeah, maybe okay, maybe they died and never reported it, and they did see the monster and the smoke killed him, and that's why they don't know there's a monster. Okay, Venom, you fixed it for me. <laughs> I still it. liked I still like Don's theory. That was a good backup. But but you kind of trump that, so there we go. The only, yeah, I mean the only way to know for sure would be how the dub handles the transition, mm -hmm. because that would tell that would tell us for sure. Like compare the Japanese version well, of the transition Derek? with the, what the narrator says in the transition scene between Kemuler's appearance and the Science Patrol Derek, the headquarters. You watch the Japanese version. How did it come out to you? I, th I thought they were explaining that there was a monster report because, like, you know, even like Fuji later on was like, but the, I heard a report about there being a monster out there. So I'm guessing they did get a report that there was a fucking monster in mm, some of I the scenes know. when she was talking to that scientist well, earlier. In, like, let's move on. on. Let's, yeah, let's move on. This is a mystery yeah. for the ages. <laughs> yeah, anyways. So after that fucking great scene of misogyny happens, Fuji ends up going on patrol in the Vidal ship. And like Jerry already said, Hoshino stow away, uh, typical fashion, child and woman's job. And that's <laughs> what's happening right now. Uh, they end up going to investigate the mountain area, and they get interrupted by a very strange man who's a manager of a rest home. Or hotel, I think it's more of a hotel or staying area. Fuck! Uh, I just remembered something. We mm -hmm. didn't talk about this in Godzilla vs. Dora, so I gotta I gotta interject this real quick. What the fuck is up when the hippies are up having their party and it just shows these old people that look like fucking ghosts in the field staring yeah. at them? That was an odd shot. The what thing is was that the that? ending in that movie in general is all over the place. Bano really took some risks with this film. My indication was that it, it was the ghosts of japan's past looking down and frowning upon how the youth of the youth at the time had turned the country into what it is they were the ones that had caused the smog and the destruction i don't brought Hidora, and the ghosts of the past are looking on in disdain for what they had did to their country but it's not the youth that did that it's it's the, yeah the... but it happened under their watch though. but no because the, the youth didn't both, have the, the watch then the youth yeah, doesn't, but, they don't have the chance, they're not under watch, like, I, it, it'd be cool if it was Ghost, but I think that's too shout out even for Bono, I, I, I almost think it was like some small group of, I don't know, because it makes no fucking sense, but I, I can't get behind them blaming the youth for it. Well, youth not in the sense of it being like, that, that generation, I mean like, generation. But it's not that generation's fault. No, like, they're the ones that in, are in charge. Like, the people of that time period. Not like, you know... When I say, like, generation, I don't mean, like, 15 to 25. I mean, like, the generation living at that time. Okay, so so if we just replace how you said it and take out youth and say the people alive at this time, the current right. living people. Right, the yeah. current... Yeah, that's... Okay. That's how I looked at it. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I just... It's a weird scene. I don't... I don't really have a good explanation for it. I don't really like that it would be ghosts. I don't really like... It's the 1970s. I don't think there's, like, a remote village that close to a big city. I don't... It's just a weird scene, and I just f forgot about it, and I wanted to bring it up, and Derek Hell, made me same, remember. Man. Hell, it's the same scene with fish heads, so it happens. Yeah, yeah the yeah, fish head rave. Maybe that was, it was interesting. Maybe it was Either. us, the audience, hallucinating. Oh, I felt Maybe. like I was hallucinating multiple times in this movie. Between the animated sequences, um, the editing of the multiple smaller screens uh, of people yelling at me. Yeah. I mean, yeah, this movie definitely takes the viewer kind of 
you know, uh, um, out of their comfort zone. I, I really wish I still tripped, because if I still tripped, I would so watch this movie. <laughs> oh, fuck it. I t- took three edibles and watched it the other day. It was fucking amazing, you. No, I want real tripping. I want to take fucking shrooms or acid and watch this shit. <laughs> but anyways, guys. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Godzilla, I mean, Ultraman. Nope. Fuck. Uh, yeah, so, you know, they get they talk to with this uh, rest home. And, uh, and they had this conversation like, oh, everything's fine. It's just a few earthquakes or something. And, then they go, and there's also like a scientist that they go visit that confirms that there's some odd earthquake activity going on. Then uh, they go back to uh, the Vito ship to leave. Uh, what ends up happening is Fuji's talking to the chiefs and stuff on the intercom system, and the strange gas starts pouring out and actually ends up knocking both Fuji and Hushino out through most of the episode. Uh, what ends up happening next is they can't get in touch with Fuji, so uh, the captain and the rest of the crew end up taking the other, the mini Vito. To go uh, save uh, fucking Fuji, and that's when we uh, first get our look, at, good look at a uh, Kelmier. Camular. Uh, Camular, John. I know Jesus. Oh, I did, I thought you were pausing because you were trying to remember. Sorry. I know what it is. <laughs> God damn it. Okay. okay. Uh, and, What's uh, the monster's name again? Camular. Mike. Oh. Mike Merriman. <laughs> He kind of looks like Mike. Every kaiju begins with K. Oh, God. Uh, I thought he but, looked like uh, Special Olympics Gamera. He, he, <laughs> what he looked like is if you... What had happened if a cockroach fucked a lizard? I'll go with that. Because he has like that backward... But the wings got fucked up on birth and they're backwards. <laughs> it is, it's, it's fucking like... That big thing on his back is actually a hem- uh, fucking hemorrhoid that's popped out. <laughs> his weak spot says hemorrhoid. <laughs> yeah. I thought it was an ulcer. <laughs> uh, he uh... has like, this weird tail that shoots a lot. It's a weird... He's like a... What, what monster was this before, Donna? Because I, I, he does look... Familiar. Um... Uh... Keep I going, I'll look think it up. Yeah, I... I... I think it's the one from like episode nine. I think. Yeah, it, it could be. It, it looks like it, but more, like a little bit more leathery. They like, like yeah. put a lot more like leather on his fucking skin and shit. It yeah, looks... I, I, I I can't remember the name. I think it's the the kaiju from like episode nine. The pearl one. I think it's the pearl no. one. No, it's the one where um the one that has the cone on its head. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It, it kind of reminded me of the one from the Pearl one, too, though. The Chew Toy. Yeah. Uh, well, that, one became, that one became a different monster altogether, though. So. It could be. But who knows. Anyways, the fucking monster's coming. He's heading over to the ship with Fuji and Hoshino in it. And fucking Hoshino wakes up. And he's like, fuck, we gotta get the fuck out of here. So he's talking to the commander on the speaker phone thing and uh, okay, Oshino, you gotta fucking do this, this, that, that, and you know, just at the right moment, Oshino flies the plane in the air right before the fucking monster is gonna shoot it with his fucking fork tail. <laughs> <laughs> and then, you know, they end up going back to the fucking, uh, you know, the s- s- command center to recruit and Ito's working on a new fucking invention and he's, He's Dr. Ito in this scene, and it's fucking hilarious. He's just dressed up as a scientist, working on an invention and shit, and, you know, I gotta find a way to stop the gas. I'm like, why don't we just hit the monster's weak spot? Holy shit, like, guys. Shit. <laughs> like, I, yeah, I had the same reaction. I was like, wow, 21 episodes in, and they finally decide, let's hit the Achilles heel of, this, of these creatures and bring it down. No fucking way! Like, wow, holy crap! Yeah, Ito's reaction, like, you're right. God damn it, you're right. God damn it. (laughs) (laughs) I had the exact same reaction. I was like, holy crap! I forgot about that scene. (laughs) Oh, it's fucking great. If it was a video game, the spot would have been blinking so that it'd be obvious for us. For real. (laughs) 
anyways, this is when uh, the next day happens, and pretty much it's time for the big final battle. You know, ships are flying, trying to get to the weak spot of Kelmular. And what ends up happening is Hayata ends up flying his fucking shit. Well, let me backtrack a second. Because Kelmular is actually doing some kind of fun fucking damage scenes in this. Like, he's just fucking rampaging the city and shit and destroying the fuck out of it. And then fucking... You know, it's, a, it's it's actually my favorite part of the episode is, like, all the destruction of the city stuff. Because you don't... We, we haven't really gotten that in a while in an Ultraman episode. For a while, anyways, that I remember. And uh, I like that about this one in that aspect. Of, but uh, what ends up happening also is Hayata decides to go fucking Kamazu- Kamazuki or Kamikaze. Kamikaze. The, Kamikaze, yeah, yeah. I know Venom. I'm tired, man. I got this. <laughs> but uh, he goes kamikaze in one of the fucking Kelmiara's wings. And then he's like doing that scene in fucking Return to Oz where Dorothy's fucking fallen through the air and shit. And fucking he's like, it's time for the beta capsule because I ain't fucking dying today. <laughs> Presses it. He becomes Ultraman. And now it's time for Dawn to give the fucking Ultraman fight breakdown. Okay, flying in for action, Ultraman lands and immediately delivers a swift kick to Kemular's jaw. Knocked over, the creature rights itself and spews the black smoke from its mouth, momentarily catching Ultraman off guard and allowing Kemular time to prepare its tail ray attack. Noticing this, Ultraman dives in and chops Kemular in the jaw, then hops away before it can deliver another attack where he delivers a specium ray shot to the face. As Arashi and Captain Mira know the, know, notice the ray did nothing to Kimular, Ito arrives with a special weapon to attack Kimular's weak spot on its back. Noting they got one shot at the creature, they circle around to get into position as Ultraman keeps a front headlock on Kimular to prevent it from going anywhere. Struggling to get free, the creature is driven back where Arashi is ready and in position with his weapon, but the struggle between Ultraman and Kimular accidentally causes Ultraman to be to get in range of the shot. Realizing the stress of the situation, Hoshino calls out for Ultraman to back off so Arashi can take take the shot, but the frantic Kemular has broken the hold and charges at Ultraman. Trying to get some separation between him and Kemular, he pushes the creature back where he's able to soon get it up onto its hind legs and jockeys it into position where the back is lined up with the science patrol. Arashi fires and scores a direct hit exploding violently and knocks Kemular to the ground, but it's not out yet. Struggling mightily to get back to its pool, Ultraman looks on while the color timer is blinking rapidly as Kemular scales the mountain, scales the mountains for its home and barely makes it back before the pool explodes. Yeah. Kaboom. Yep. He, he's he's going to have to sit there for a while and let it leak. <laughs> and then this brings me back to my point that I made earlier about another similarity that these um, that are two that our movie and TV show this week have in common. The human characters were actually helpful in both movies. Um, in, in the Godzilla movie, they created, you know, that electrical charge station, if you will, that ends up taking out Hedorah. Obviously, they're not able to get a charge to it in time to be able to take 100 percent credit. But the fact that they're able to create this thing, put it in a spot where Godzilla can utilize it, I just like I, I was very surprised that the human characters were actually more helpful than deterrences in this one. And then yeah. the same thing in this one. The Science Patrol, you could make the argument that the Science Patrol really won this fight. Obviously, they're not going to do it without Ultraman. They're not going to be able to get the monster Kemular to actually get in the proper position. But ultimately, it's the science patrol that takes the striking blow, the killing blow. So I, I, I thought that that was also kind of a cool little um, similarity between our movie and TV show of, of humans actually helping their kaiju brothers out. So You are all not going to believe this. Okay, because I didn't do the Ultraman report, I didn't actually do my research on the episode. Mm-hmm. Uh when it, so I was looking while y'all were going through everything. I was looking up to see if uh, this costume was used before. It actually was not. This is a new costume 
Though later on, its back was used to create the back of Z uh, Zetan suit, who we'll see later on in the future. But check this out. Kimular's roar would later be used by the Toho monster Hedora. Oh, shit. <laughs> Another I, connection. I did realize that. They did sound kind of familiar, now that I think about it. Yes. Also, in the film Terra Mechagodzilla, one of Mifune's anatomical drawings of dinosaurs is Kimular. <laughs> oh, shit. Mm. What's, what's funny, too, is that as when I heard Kemular making his noises, I actually thought it sounded a little bit like Kayaku, but sped up. <laughs> you know, Kayaku's little, you know, uh, uh, yeah. It sounded like that, but sped up a little bit more. So Kemular was doing it a little bit faster. That's what it reminded me of, anyway. Mm. <laughs> but now time to get to the end of the episode, guys. Ultraman flies off. Everyone doesn't know where Hayat is, if he made it or not. You know, they end up going to the hospital to visit Fuji. Bring her presents. Of course, Ido has two of them in his hand because he's that friend. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know. By the way, how good does Fuji look in a hospital gown? Not bad. Looking for for not having very much makeup on, too. I thought she was adorable. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah course, I can see it. Yeah. And of course, who's there with Fuji? Hayata. And everyone's looking at her face like, huh? The fuck? Why are you here? And yeah, I don't quite up. understand that. Did, 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 did they really think that he was like out of town on vacation? Or was that no. just what they were going to tell no, Fuji? No, the, the English dub, there's a weird thing with it. Because I, as I was watching it, I, I was doing the English dub, they make mention that Hayata had left for a conference in Paris. Oh, yeah, so they say that in actually yeah, the Japanese wasn't... version, too. Yeah, so, oh, I, I didn't know. But on the English dub, because you can clearly see that that's not what Murrah is saying, because he, he mentions it when they're in the hallway before they enter the room. That's why Hayata is not there. In the English dub, he mentions that Hayata is out on a like a conference or a special assignment in Paris. So he doesn't want them to mention it because he she, he thinks that'll upset Fuji, you know, wondering where he is. Yeah. So that's what the conversation out in the hall is. Oh, see, I thought that they, I thought that they li literally thought Hayata had died in the VTOL uh, explosion, well, well, they don't and know that they were just going to lie to Fuji and tell him that tell her that oh no, he's just out of town for now. Like I don't, rem you know, yeah. I, obviously they they're filling in you know plot points that we weren't privy to as the viewer. But yeah. yeah, that was weird. That confused me for a second. Yeah, yeah, it was them not trying not to make her upset while she was in the yeah. hospital, pretty much. Yeah, no, the yeah, the conversation with them out in the out in the room before they enter is Mura saying that Hayata's out on is away in Paris on a conference call and not to tell her because it'll upset her. Gotcha. Yeah. But anyways, that's the end of the Ultraman episode. And it, it, it it's basic Ultraman. This is kind of like the more formula episode, I think, of the series where you had the giant monster and the Ultraman stuff happening, you know, the science patrols involved. Uh, I'll start with Venom. Venom, what did you think about this episode, buddy? I mean, this this episode was decent. It was kind of a middle of the road episode. It doesn't it didn't really strike me as great. But it didn't really come off as bad either. Decent creature. Um, you know, the villainous kaiju was pretty decent looking. Like I said, I called him Special Olympics Gamera earlier. But obviously he kind of, once he actually moves those plates on his back, you can tell that it's something that he actually utilizes in combat. That it's not just like decoration or a shell or whatever. So yeah. it was just really first impression more than anything. But yeah, I mean, just like you said, this was your basic Ultraman episode. It's... Uh, it gave us some decent storylines. It put Hayata in danger, as they you know usually do. I actually like um, the fact that he ejected from the VTOL before it exploded, and then is able to transform into Ultraman in privacy, you know, without being stared at. So yeah. I thought that was you know rather than him just running out to a bush and hiding, you know, I thought this was a, just a different way of uh, achieving that. Um, you know, the fight was decent. It seemed like it was just a lot of pushing and shoving, a lot of Ultraman just trying to keep uh, Kemular at arm's length, you know, pushing him down and away. 
But uh, overall, you know, decent, nothing that I can really rave about, but not really anything that I could, you know, nitpick too terribly either. So, you know, it's a solid middle of the road episode. Nice, nice. Donnie boy. Yeah, Venom pretty much hit what I have to say about it. It's, you know, it's a formula, it's a formula episode. Um, I do think it's kind of hurt by not knowing much about Kemular because we don't get, I don't even think we even really get his name. It's just, mm-hmm. you know, the studio, the studio telling us that's what the creature is because they don't even, I don't even remember them calling it by name in the episode. I don't think so either. Yeah. So I'm saying that, like, you know, usually we get like a appearance or something, you know, we get like a backstory or an appearance or something like that. But I mean, usually. Other than that, there's, you you know, we don't get that in this episode, but, you know, it's fast enough. The creature's out early enough. You know, the appearance of the smog is a nice little connection that would serve as a logical excuse to get them out there and discover it. I, I do enjoy the rampage scene in the city. I do think that's a really fun sequence. But did anyone else have a brain fart and suddenly realize that they were attacking the middle of the city and the next thing you know, they're out in the middle of the plains and the mountains where all, where the creature's home was? <laughs> I thought it was, was just that, a tiny city. <laughs> was that just me or did, did it just feel like you like had like a brain fart for a second? Yeah, it's just the way it's probably edited. It, 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 it's probably been like a few hours <laughs> yeah. for them, but for us it's only like a few minutes or seconds. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm just saying, it, it just felt weird because it was like he's in the middle of the city, he's rampaging, he's doing his thing, and then all of a sudden he gets to the military confrontation and they're out in the middle of the mountains. And it's like, wait, what? Wasn't he just in the middle of the city like two seconds ago? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, whatever. you know, yeah, it's a, fun, it's a little weird thing. But, I mean, other than that, yeah, I don't have too much to say about it. I, I do wish it, the, the fight between Ultraman and Kemular would have been a little bit more than just, you know, standing him up and trying to get him into into position like it was more of a combat thing like trying to wear him down so we can get him into position without having to do anything like i wish that could have been like the storyline for the fight like you know beat him down so that way he can do it instead of trying to push and shove him to you know get that you know to get the lucky shot in but yeah i don't have much else uh, to say about this one nice nice jerry lay it on us brother um, I just, I don't know why. I was just really bored with this episode. And I think it is because it's too formula- formulaic. It doesn't have, like, a good mystery. It doesn't have a good edge. I also felt that it screwed over my girl. Like, it made it like she was going to be the main thing. And then they're like, sleep. And then she just sleeps. And so that, that really, like, kind of bugged me. I didn't find the fight that interesting. Like, I get Ultraman had to keep the, the monster's mouth shut so that the gas wouldn't hit him. Um... But it just, yeah, this one just, it's not a bad episode. It just didn't do anything special, which is weird because a lot of death. A whole lot of people died on that airplane. You have people dying from the gas. Like, there's a lot that is positive. It's just weird to me that with all, like, the the unique things about this episode, it's so boring. Yeah. So, I I don't know. I'm okay with it. I wouldn't, uh, you know, call it bad. Yeah, I, I pretty much agree. It's like a middle episode for me, myself, also. Like I said, I do like that Rampage scene, even though I kind of do now agree with Don when he's saying, like, wait a minute, now he's in the mountain. <laughs> but but you, it, it's just the way that these, because the show's so fucking short to begin with, you just gotta shut that off, and then some of that instances of consistencies of time which unfortunately happens with it i do you know all skins aside i do like the thrust and hemorrhoid effect in this fucking <laughs> it, it reminded me of like naked lunch yeah. like the talking assholes naked lunch. oh i was thinking of the giant cockroach <laughs> yeah or cricket whatever the hell it was that's right the giant bug <laughs> yeah the giant cow bug I can uh, actually gotta watch that. I'll, I'll, I'll tell it off here, but uh, uh, yeah, it's a it's okay episode. Like I, I agree with Jerry. I wish Fuji because they set her up to be like the main character of the fucking episode, then they just knock her out. You know, it's kind of fucked up. 
Yeah, built, the women's movement in 1967 didn't have a whole lot of, you know, ground they built, yet. They built Cosby to her and shit. A little bit, yeah. Tell me Laura's <laughs> fucking Bill Cosby. <laughs> wow. <laughs> but anyways, yeah, that's it. It's okay episode. I, okay. Dope. Uh, well, that's it for the Ultraman report, so we are going to move on to saying our goodbyes and telling the good people what we've done lately so they can check it out. Uh, Don, let's start with you. Okay, so, um, I've been doing a a ton of guest spots recently. Um, I've been with NFW doing a uh, run of killer snake movies, um, yourself included on the uh, last one recently where we looked at... The last installment in the Anaconda series, the crossover with the Lake Placid franchise. <laughs> which It was a uh, lot of fun. Don and I killed it. So when that releases, check that out. Absolutely. Um, I also have a uh, appearance on uh, Bay of Blood, where um, turns out I'm not going to be hosting one episode. I'm going to be hosting two episodes, where we look <laughs> at a series of Jaws ripoffs. So uh, I'm going to see uh, uh, Jerry. I'm going to see you and Derek in a couple of weeks when we tackle part two, because me and Venom covered part one last night. And uh, how that's uh, what you get for doing such a good job hosting, Don. They, wait, they time out. you for the second one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I have not been told about any of this. What am I getting involved in? Um, aren't you doing the Bay of Blood? Uh, no, he's Blood? not. No, no, I I, I was not invited. I wish I was invited. Oh, I thought you were because like I nope. said, I, you were into those things. So I thought you. Were oh invited. yeah, I'm definitely into them. But yeah, no one talked to me about it. Told me anything. Oh. No. Wow, weird. So yeah, yeah. way to Scott fuck up, Bay of Blood. Yeah. You're, you're, you're gonna guess on a normal episode of Bay of Blood, which is like six hours of fuck that. suffering and pain. No. <laughs> but um, okay, well then I guess Derek, I'll see you in a few weeks. Um. And then lastly, me and Venom did the latest uh, Fresh Cuts episode where we looked at the um, Netflix release Darklight. So um, other than waiting on two drink minimum commentaries to drop where I did uh, guest spots for Desperado and Eating Raul, um, Underwater Kaiju is uh, my main show. Oh, um, yeah, one last thing. I just realized this. Um. I should be on the latest uh, Club Dreadcasts with uh, J-Mac. We looked at uh, uh, Veronica. Oh, God. oh, boy. I'm sorry. Oh, God. I didn't make it through that movie. I didn't make it through the cover. I was at <laughs> the L.A. premiere, and Danzig was there, and I snuck out of there as soon as the movie was over. I didn't want anybody asking me what I thought about it. <laughs> Mother! I, I don't blame you. All right, um... Derek, what do you got coming up? Not a lot, uh, because Cinema Tech hasn't been fucking recording. Not because we're fucking hating each other or wanting to kill each other or anything like that. It's just we're all fucking busy because of the outside world bullshit. I'm not going to keep bringing up the outside world bullshit. Everyone knows what the fuck's going on. But uh, we're, we're trying to work it each day at a time with that and uh like i said matt's schedule is leaning and my schedule sucks and w's been working saturday so it's been kind of tough just to schedule like a regular size episode for those shows we might have to work on that in background and try to figure out a way to because i still want to do shows and shit uh cellulite section should be recording in uh two weeks time where me and Carly will be looking at Charles Bronson and Def Wish. Woo! Yeah, this is going to be a Carly episode where she's going to be talking, and I actually get to sit down and relax. Like, oh, yeah. Just keep talking, what? Carl. Why does this movie <laughs> keep coming up? It's like it's haunting me because I've never seen Death Wish, and it's just popping up everywhere now. Well, that's your problem. <laughs> uh, well, I don't know, Jerry. Ask Carly. She's the one who picked the episode. Hmm. It's a classic movie. How have you not watched it? Oh, right. You don't like action. That's right. Well, this not, well, God damn well, right. Well, the original <laughs> Death Wish really isn't... Well, I'll, you listen to the episode, Jerry, anyways. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'll get into it then. And, as you all know, speaking of Carly and me, we 
It's Friday night. We just finished recording a seven plus hour 1985 top 10 show on the 22 shots of moods and horror. It was, of course, moods, JP, the return of Jeremy Freeman, me, Carly, and Dave Parker. And you uh, say the return of Jeremy Freeman like it was something we were waiting for. <laughs> hey, yeah, yeah, I, I, I like Jeremy. I'm being nice to him. I like Jeremy too. He's never done anything to me. <laughs> you know, you know, <laughs> but it should be a fun episode. We had a blast. Uh, the ending of the episode is fucking hilarious, especially with moods. It's all I'll leave with no spoilers. You gotta hear it. It's fucking funny as shit ever. But uh, I'm very excited to let people know about the next year when it comes up because I'm excited to do that. I already have the films picked out, so uh, the I already got my stack for the next top ten list that I already own, and I picked up a few of them. So I'm excited to do that and dig into that year because it could be a Russian roulette where you get one good movie and one fucking shit bomb. <laughs> so that should be fun. <laughs> and that's about it. All right. Um, as for me, the last Kill the Cast episode was best of the 2010s. And we had Tim from Horror for Dummies podcast join us for that great episode. Check it out. Last Atomic Age Saucer Cast was... The day the earth stood still, filled Great with fun episode. facts. Yeah, fun facts that are not true. Mm-hmm. Uh, really, really good episode there. Great episode. Um, and, oh, y'all listen, y'all are so sweet. Uh-huh. Um, I love that movie. Anyway, either way, oh god, so good. We all listen um, to our. We all listen to our boss. <laughs> I don't uh, listen to any Jason Lloyd podcast. Fuck that guy. Mm-hmm. We're not on horse. No, 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 no. Oh, that's right. I'm sorry. <laughs> You're good, boss. boss. <laughs> the kill the cast, boss. Yeah. Well, actually, technically. No, it's me. Like a supervisor, and then Bo would be like the. No, owner. no, no, no. Because I'm not hosted. My material is hosted on Podbean. I have a partnership with Legion, so it's more like just a a, a team up. There, I'm your boss. Mm. He's not your boss. I'm your boss. Yeah. Yeah. I, I knew what bosses. I said. I knew what I said. I tickle you now, Jerry. I what? I'm going to tickle you now. You want to tickle me and he wants a raise. This is getting weird. Okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> speaking of people that also work under me, uh, I did a guest spot for Friday Nightmares podcast that you can find on the Kill the Cast banner. The episode is not out yet, but it is a bunch of us going over our top five most influential movies in our life. Uh, there is a 1985 movie in there, Derek, uh, for me. Nice. And, uh, God, what didn't I do? Oh, I did his and hers podcast for the 2019 movie or 2020. I don't know what it's counting as porno. Uh, I recorded that (laughs) yesterday. Um, it is not an actual porno. And I think that's it for me. I may miss. I've been jumping on a lot of guests. Pl- oh yeah, fuck yes, not out yet. But I jumped on the Psycho Semantic podcast. This is the one I'm guest spot I'm most excited for. We cover the documentary Hail Satan, and I got to talk about Satanism and my journey with Satanism and all that. That is a really fucking good episode. It's funny and it's also very informative. Uh, if you want kind of an idea about Satanism, so. Check that shit the fuck out. It was so good. Uh, whenever it drops. I don't know when it's dropping. Other than that, I got nothing. Um, I'm going to dr- I'm gonna just try to keep hitting some more guest spots during quarantine. And, uh, you know, have fun. I have podcasting, you know, saving my boredom. It's keeping me occupied. I might be recording tomorrow if I watch a movie. But I'm not going to say that because I don't know if I'm going to. I probably will. I'm going to be on a podcast tomorrow with Venom. So... <laughs> There's that. All right, uh, that is it for us. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Uh, Next time, we may be uh, going to North Korea. So we enjoyed South Korea so much. Why not go (laughs) north? Uh, Did we really enjoy South Korea that much? Yeah, you know, (laughs) eh, somewhat. Uh, Some of us more than others, I agree, but eh. still even... Even overall, you know, I don't know, maybe, uh, no, not really. Um, okay, so thank you all for joining us for our visions for Monsterlands. 
we are out. Keep it fucking kaiju clean out there. You know, don't pollute. Or don't touch your hemorrhoids. Don't touch your hemorrhoids. Use protective gear. PPE. Use it. In preparation age. Do In yo. preparation age. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we're done. We're out. Later, everyone. Later. Adios. If you enjoyed this show, then make sure you check out the other great shows on the Legion Podcast Network, like Cinema PsyOps, Cinema Beef, Devour the Podcasts, Duncan and Bo Come Correct, Exploding Heads Horror Movie Podcast, Friday the 13th, Get Slayed, The Hell Ming Power Hour, Hello, This is the Doom Show, Hero Hero Ghost Show, Kill the Cast, Underwater Kaiju from Outer Space, Jerry Hates Action, Legion After Dark, Metal Health, Obsessive Cinema, Discourse, Pick Six Movies, The Podcast by the Cemetery, The Podcast on Haunted Hill, The Psycho Semantic Podcast, Rick Radio, House of Wax, Dude Looks Like the 80s, Rabbit and Red Radio, The Shade Cast, Short Bus Cinema, Two Drink Minimum Commentaries, The VD Clinic, Who Will Survive Horror Podcast, and Which vs. the Doomsday Clock. With such a widespread of shows, there is guaranteed to be a niche for you to fall in love with. Horror, politics, movies, books, sex, music, commentaries, health, video games, kaiju, action, news, comedy, and opinions that would most likely get you killed in some parts of the world. We are proud to bring you some of the best podcasting in the world. Check us out at www.legionpodcast.com, iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, YouTube, and any other dark corner of the internet where podcasts can be found.